you. I'd like to uh, to to propose a, a an amendment to that agenda um, to discuss um, the tragedy that occurred earlier this week at the Independence um, Apartment Building, and Christina will talk to us about that. Um, so. Um, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Both, uh, those opposed, same sign. Okay, Christine, we'll just add that to the end of the agenda. So that being said, uh, there's only a couple items on the agenda prior to that. Uh, if you, the minutes from our last meeting were included with your agenda, uh, I would take a motion to accept the minutes as presented. So moved, Jason. We have a second. Oh. After second. second. Okay. okay. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Same sign for the, those who uh, oppose. Okay, motion carries. Uh, the minutes are accepted as presented. So the first uh, item on the agenda has to do with the Community health assessment, and with that, I'll turn it over to Christina. There's actually one other thing: uh, board vacancies and applications first. Oh, that's right. All right, sorry. I it's okay. Right by that, when you want to talk, you've got both of you. Um, so I wanted to point out, of course, we still have a vacancy for a mental health practitioner, and very recently, I was uh, notified by Dr. Wingert that he is not going to seek reappointment. So we have a vacancy for a vet also. So we do need to see if there's anyone we can convince to do that. Do, do they have to be a veterinarian or can they be a vet technician or I mean, is that the exact thing? I just want the, to check in. The city code calls for the individual to be a veterinarian. And do they have to live in town or have business in town or one or the other? So they have to have one or the other or both, of course. Okay. Um, yeah, when we changed it for the mental health practitioner, they are allowed to either have their primary practice here in Independence or be a resident of Independence. Either one will work. Cool. Thank you. So if you know someone, please notify Christina. Yes, I can go ahead and send out the application to everyone um, so you guys have it and what the criteria are that we're looking to fill. Um, and that way, everyone, if you come across someone who would like to join us six times a year, we would love to have them. Okay. Next time on the agenda is the community health assessment. Yes, so um, we just finished collecting um, our newest, well, sending out and then collecting back the surveys. Um, we received back 2,260 surveys, which brought us to a 90% confidence interval. Um, with a 2% margin of error. So we were very happy to get back the number of surveys that we did. Um, the findings were not that much, well, the public health concerns, the top five were not that much different from what we saw a few years ago. Um, affordable housing, mental health, houselessness, um, availability of affordable health care uh, was a new one on there, and then firearms and gun violence. Um, the other things that stood out um and of course we're we're still writing um the actual report portion and we'll be presenting in september to the council on this um but some of the other things that stood out uh suicide is the second leading cause of death um for those that are ages uh well one through 44. It's the second leading cause of death and in independence is suicide. Um, and 
going along with that, suicide related ER visits have increased um, in the last, well, in the five years of available data that we're able to access. Um, so we're seeing continued issues with mental health. Uh, poverty was a big issue. Uh, we had 19% of our respondents worried that they would run out of food before they had the ability to buy more. Um, and 23%, so almost a quarter of our respondents said that they sometimes have to choose between buying food and paying a bill. So rather disheartening. Um, this is not really that surprising to most of us in public health and healthcare, I'm sure, but uh, when we asked our respondents to rank their overall health, um, those with higher income were more likely to rank their health as very good or excellent, while those that had lower income were more likely to rate their health or their overall health as fair or poor. Um, I mean, those those are some of the biggest takeaways. Uh, so we are still seeing a lot of issues with mental health. We're still seeing a lot of issues with poverty. Um, overall, the leading cause of death for citizens of independence remains heart disease. Um, but yeah, we have we have a lot. So, so I wanted Christina, to make sure you guys were aware. Yeah. So it, uh, when is there a, a, a written thing? And do you do have time before the council with a part of a study session or something to report? And then yes. I guess wh what what do we what do we do with this in? So we are scheduled for a study session before the council. Um, I believe it's the second Monday in September, which is either the 9th or the 10th. I would have to look at a calendar. I apologize. Um, but we so we're scheduled for that first study session to present that evening. We expect that we'll be, if not done, very close to done with the written report um, at that time. Uh, so we'll be able to post it online. Um, all of this data will then lead to the next step, which is our community health improvement plan. We'll be bringing stakeholders together um, that will include some members of the Board of Health, I would hope, to come and decide what we should focus on for the next three to five years, um, taking into account not only everything, all of the survey results, but also all of the knowledge of our stakeholders about what our capabilities are and what we should be focusing on, what they see. So we have big steps ahead of us. Thank you. This is Brittany Handless. Can I ask that maybe you put it to the second study session in September? I'm going to be on vacation. I know Heather's going to be on vacation, so I just I want to be sure you get a good hearing by the full council. I can ask. I can ask. My understanding was the second um, study session is already full with something, and I don't remember what it was. Um, okay. But I can ask if anybody's willing to switch. Thank you. And how long until your chip is available? Your health improvement plan? So we're going to be working on the community health improvement plan this fall. Um, we plan on bringing stakeholders together um, and using not only the community health assessment, but our stakeholders um, to inform on what our chip should look like. We have our ideas, of course, but I mean, this, as you know, um, I, a chip is a big lift and has to be a community wide lift. So it, it can't just be us. So we need to make sure that what we're choosing are things that, you know, whether it's our, you know, the Eastern Jackson County group on mental health for youth or whether it's, you know, the Board of Health, whether it's uh, comprehensive or Community Services League, we're going to need a lot of different 
stakeholders all working in the same direction on some of these numbers. So I guess let me ask my question differently. When is your goal to have your chip released? Is it six months, one year? Our goal is to have it released by the end of the year. OK, thank we you. know what we need to do. We just have to do it. Any other questions? Christina, thank you for that. And we'll like, you know, I, I'm sure after you have the full report available, we'll hear something similar at our next meeting as well. So um, look forward to that. So with that, we'll go on to the last item on the agenda that was recently added. Uh, what, you know, what part does the health department play um, or will it play in the tragedy that occurred earlier this week? Um, at the Independence Department building. So, yes, Independence Towers and the tragedy that occurred um, due to many factors, including that the, the lack of air conditioning and open windows. So the health department, we were asked multiple times if there was something we could do to intervene. Um, community development has had uh, ongoing case. I know they've had it the entire summer and I'm pretty sure it started earlier this spring. Um, community development addresses landlord tenant complaints. So uh, it used to be that health had codes that was moved over to community development. And with that, the landlord tenant complaints, uh, rental ready program, all of those things. So community development has a case. They've been working on it. Um, we looked at our code. We are able to, you know, close a business or shut down or take steps for establishments that have a permit through us. So lodging establishments, hotels, motels, those sorts of things. We can close those for issues with health and safety. However, when it's private residences, we don't have that ability unless it's a communicable disease transmission and a concern there. That was not the case here, so health does not have a part to play. Uh, we're incredibly sympathetic and we will support our other departments. I know fire, police, um, community development, multiple dark departments have been involved over the last few months and we'll support them however we can, whether it's through ARCH or just information, we'll do what we can, but unfortunately we don't have much of a role to play. Oh, you're muted, sir. And thanks for addressing that. I know there's probably those who have questions about what role, or which department would take the lead in in, uh, in uh, managing the strategy. So, um, thanks for that. So, I don't have anything else on the agenda. I would. Our next meeting is when, Christina. I always ask you this, so. I should probably look it up instead of putting you on. You're on mute as well. I apologize. October 3rd. Okay. Okay. Well, I hope everyone can join us on October 3rd. Uh, I move to uh, adjourn the meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Christina, folks, thank you for your time this evening. Take care. Thank you. Thank you so much.